Hi everyone, it's Will Tonner here, uh, sound designer and audio programmer for Lampate Audio. Um, and in this video, we're going to be looking at uh, ambient emitters um, and uh, look at creating uh, localized ambiences um, that change dynamically in, cord in accordance to uh, to two main variables. So the first is that is the location of the player. Uh, in relation to the ambient emitter, um, uh, atten looking at the attenuation of that, um, and the second is the the time of day uh, within the game itself using an RTPC, and this will give you a bit of a glimpse, uh, not just at time of day uh, blending, but uh, blending on, on on any RTPC um, within Wise. So the ambience itself. Uh, they'll consist of two layers. So the first layer is an underlying uh, bed of ambient sound, um, and then each type of ambience uses two separate files. So we're going to use one for day uh, and one for night, and then we'll blend between the volume of each of these files using a, an R RTPC within a, within a blending container. Um, the second layer is, is a series of randomized um, ornamental sounds, uh, and the current time RTPC, which we'll get into into more detail, um, that'll affect the volume of each of those random containers um, that contain those ornamental sounds. Um, so let's jump over to Wise and we'll, we'll look at that in more detail now. So as with the character work unit, um, we've created a separate bus for the environmental sound. So we've got our work unit over here, ambient demo, uh, and then our core ambient mixer underneath that. You can see the output bus here is set to uh, to ambience, and again we've got one for each of the areas we'll be looking at. Um, so that groups all of the following sounds under under that channel. Um, the first thing I wanted to do before we actually get into the uh, the audio containers themselves is jump over onto the RTPC because um, um, it's integral to how the ambience blending works. So we go overhead uh, onto game syncs, and again I've got a, a default work unit, but a folder for uh, environment or, or ambient, um, and under that we've got one for current time. Um, so this is the RTPC that will be um, uh, that will be referencing throughout uh, Wise, and that directly alters a number of sound properties. Um, over the audio, so volume, pitch, pan, uh, bus sends, filter cutoff, just to name a few. So we keep the value respective of the time in game um, by passing a variable that exists within Unity directly back to Wise every in-game frame. And we do that using an API function called setRTPCValue. Um, for now, we'll just concentrate on what we need to set up within Wise, uh, and we discuss the integration when we look at Unity itself. Um, so we've uh, we've defined a minimum and maximum value for the RTPC um, here from zero to uh, 23. Um, it's not critical to make sure the boundaries are exactly the same as that within the game. Um, so if we push a value from Unity outside the bound, these bounds, so in, outside of zero to 23, Wise will still accept uh, and update the RTPC accordingly um, based on the maximum bound. So if you push out uh, you know, 25, for example, it will still map to 23. You can push out a million, it would still map to 23. Um, but it's good practice and it helps Wise present an accu accurate graphical representation uh, of the RTPC, um, you'll see what that means uh, further on. Um, so we'll we'll set the default um, to to twelve uh, for noon, uh, which makes sense in this case. Um, so if the set RTPC value command is never received, then Wise will just initialize to that amount, um, and it will never change. Um, that's actually it within Wise in terms of the uh, uh, of the value and the RTPC itself. Um, we'll revisit it when we come back to Unity um, and how we actually. Uh, update that on the fly. So let's go back over to audio uh, and within our ambience mixer um, we've got two mixers. We'll concentrate on wood ambience. We do have one for for a beach sound as well um, and if in wood, uh, wood ambience you'll see we've got uh, four uh, more containers. Let's start with um, the day ambience and night ambience sound effects on their own. Um, so we've got two static files and they loop around continuously to, pr to provide some background ambience. So once, once we use obviously during the in-game dawn and day states, and then one is for uh, dusk um, and for night. Um, so the key here is that we use as short a file as possible um, to preserve disk space without the file evidently being looped to the player. Um, so they all exist within this uh, wood ambience layer that we'll look at in a second. Um, but if I go to the, the next two, which is day events and night events, um, they're designed specifically to limit the uh, what you call machine gun effect um, that you get when you loop sounds around. So day and night events are two separate random containers. Um, they have a selection of sounds underneath them. So uh, you can see here we've got four uh, day birds events and then under night. Um, we've got a few more dog barks, an hour hoot, small dog bark. Um, 
and the idea is that they add variety to the experience and they pre prevent obvious looping um, because they're randomly triggered they create the audible illusion of a single layer of natural ambience um, with no clear start and end point it's, there's a bit of mild automation um, to pitch and in, in the 3d the 3d panning uh, as well just to uh, give a bit of a an illusion of um, uh, a, a variation so if we jump higher up into the wood ambience layer itself go over to general settings um, this is a, is a blend container and we've got two separate tracks that use the current time rtpc is the key variable so if i go ahead and hit edit you can see we've got time amp blend and time uh, event blend so uh, one track represents the ambient bed up here um, uh, and, and the volume of day ambience and night ambience is modulated using the value of current time uh, the RTPC. Um, the second uh, represents day events and night events where we apply the exact same technique to alter uh, whether we hear either one container exclusively um, or, a, uh, or a blending of the two. Um, in terms of actual events and how we uh, kick this event off and how we get it started, if I jump over to the events tab um, under, um, uh, under ambient events you'll have one for start wood ambience. Um, and it's uh, very, very basic. It essentially just starts playing those previous um, sound effect items. Um, and this is the key event that Unity will trigger uh, for each um, relevant ambient emitter when the game initializes. And it'll just continue, continually play until the sound engine shut down. Uh, so as, as such, it's, it's fairly easy to actually uh, implement in the game. And the only other thing that we need to look at within WISE in this case is the uh, share set um, for att attenuation curve. So if I jump over into the uh, share set window, you see we've got quite a few different ones. The one we want to look at here is, is nature ambience. So crucially, we're using this to define the way in which an ambience fades uh, in and out as the player moves in and out of its area of effect. So we do this through this attenuation curve here. Um, in this case, we've just got a flat curve over 170 uh, in-game uh, distance units and you'll have to tweak this to get the right sound for your game um, but again this is where wise comes into its, uh, its element it's very easy to jump in and out and just change the max distance and, and actually change the curve itself so I can right click and I can change that to stop it being linear and I can make that uh, a, a logarithmic curve instead something like that or even um, uh, uh, sign make it dip even more um, but in this case, we'll just go back and make it uh, linear. Um, so the attenuation editor window um, tells us which audio module is actually referencing this share set. So in this case, just ambience, um, the just ambience mixer. Um, but the benefit of share sets is that you can make global changes very easily um, if you do have multiple sources referencing it. So if we did want to reference other um, ambient uh, emitters against this share set and we want to change all of them globally, then we just need to change this one and that'll make the change uh, globally. So the only other thing we need to do in this case is change the layout over to sound bank. Um, and as with everything else, you can see character, if I deselect, reset ambient, um, and then it's just a case of hit generate uh, and that'll go ahead and build our new uh, sound banks as per the previous videos. Um, so that's it for WISE. Um, let's jump over into Unity and we can uh, we can look at the uh, the ambient emitters um, in action. So here we are in Unity. Um, what we want to do is is go ahead and create a, a static emitter uh, for the ambient sounds. And the easiest way of doing this is going into a game object, create a 3D one, and go ahead and create a sphere. Um, zoom in a little bit on this so essentially we can use this sphere uh, and disable the the physical properties um, of it so basically the the collider um, and the mesh um, and that means the player can't see or interact with the emitter so it's very much like the footstep zones we created in the in the last video um, the next steps are made very simple using the the wise picker um, so if we use the drag and drop functionality down here open up the events go into ambient events the start wood ambience is the one that we're going to want to use. So what we can do is actually just drag that over um, as we've last time on top of the um, uh, the sphere itself, um, and, and then that will go ahead and create a very basic um, uh, event trigger. Um, so so th this specific event is used to trigger the ambience um, uh, essentially as a, as a one shot. So we've dragged that straight onto the game object, and it's now a component. Um, so a couple of things we need to do is turn off environment aware. 
Um, that's typically used for things like reverb portals. Um, we're, we're not going to be using those in this case. Uh, the rest of the parameters um, can pretty much be left as is. Um, we're triggering on start, which is great. That's what we want to do. Um, we just have to remember to reference the loading of the ambient bank at some stage. So I'm, I'm not doing it here. And the reason being is, let me go ahead and delete this sphere. Uh, up here under amp emitters, I already have two uh, ambient spheres that I've created. So I've got one for wood ambience. And actually, if I go ahead and uh, 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 and zoom in on that, it's just here. Um, obviously, we've disabled all the collider so that we can't see that, but I'll place it in the forest to, to give the illusion that that's where the central sound is is coming from. Um, but under the amp emitters group component, that's where I have our AK bank script. Uh, so these steps alone uh, will actually give us a fully working ambient emitter. Um, and the attenuation curves have been set correctly. We, we should get a realistic uh, roll off effect when we move away from the central point. So let's um, let's go ahead and jump in and look at that now. I should say you'll also hear a beach ambient sound that I've created earlier. Um, that's around about uh, here or so. So about uh, 50 meters in front of me from this stage. So that's where that's being generated from. But if I run off towards the uh, the area that we were just talking about, you should start to hear that ambient uh, creep in. Is. If I move away from it, that'll slowly start to fade out. Be, repla be replaced again with the, uh, the beach ambience. Great, so I'll go ahead and turn it off. So, um, bear in mind, we're only hearing the sound as we would when it's representing noon. Um, so we haven't implemented the current time RTPC yet. Uh, so WISE is just referencing the default value. So when we want to go ahead and set up a, a day-night cycle, um, what I've done is use a pre-made script. So under world objects, I have my day-night controller um, and a script um, that I've created. I'm going to put the link up on the video of, of where this script uh, is from. Um, but uh, the usage descriptions are available on the on the website. But all I've needed to do was adapt it for wise usage. So there's a specific, uh, you see there's quite a few different variables that are created and referenced throughout the script. There's one specifically um, that we'll be using and that is world time hour. So if I go ahead and uh, do a search for that, we can see there's a, a specific uh, function that's used to define how world time hour exists. And it's, it's quite a bit of maths involved in that. So again, rather than reinventing the wheel, um, this is a brilliant little um, formula in itself. And what it does is it generates a, a number between uh, zero and 23 um, to represent the, the, the world time hour. So um, what we want to do um, is use the set RTPC value function to push that current format from zero to 23 straight back into Y's. Um, and we do that uh, just here. So during the update function, when we update the world time and create that variable, um, one of the new lines that I've inserted here is this AK sound engine dot set RTPC value. Um, and the format for the function is the command itself. Um, then we open the parenthesis and we put the name of the RTPC as exists in Y. So we have current time. Um, and lastly, the name of the integer value, uh, variable as it exists in Unity, so world time hour. And that literally every frame says set current time as world time hour and push that back to push that back to Wise. Um, now I'll go ahead and play. Um, we'll see that the uh, the in-game time is referenced by a, uh, a UI element in the bottom right there. Uh, let's move back over to our uh, uh, one well, of the ambient sources itself. We'll give it a bit of time and uh, let's hear that, uh, that change in real time. And it's around the, uh, I believe, the five o'clock mark when we actually start to fade out some of the day sounds and bring some of the, the night sounds in. There's also a bit of um, a lighting change that happens, um, that's uh, just a bit of a visual effect.
and we can hear that fading and now we're in full night mode so that swing all the way back round And as we approach the um, dawn phase, we'll start to hear those day sounds fade back in. And that's pretty much it. So I hope that's been uh, that's been useful and giving you a bit of a, an overview of. Uh, of ambience emitters. Um, next, uh, the next video we're going to be looking uh, at uh, at a light um, and being able to control sound using the intensity, using the colour, using some of the other properties of that light. Um, but that's it for me. Thanks very much for watching. Um, subscribe if you find this very useful, um, and uh, please do share to anyone else who you think uh, might be a good resource for. Thanks very much.